Are you ready to hear about electron configurations and Orwell diagrams? I hope so. Here we go. Hello everyone. This lesson is about electron configurations and orbital diagrams. What's electron configuration or orbital diagram, you ask? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you. They are pretty similar, but there's some differences to them, too. So let's get right to it. Electron configuration, or orbital diagram for an atom, is the distribution of electrons among the orbitals of an atom. Electron configurations and orbital diagrams are determined by distributing the atom's electrons among levels, sublevels, and orbitals. Now, we'll do a lot of practice with this, but the levels would be the highest, and then we get more and more specific as we go to the sublevels and orbitals. So that's where the electrons can be sitting around the nucleus in the electron cloud. There are different places where the electrons are most likely to be. Remember, an orbital is where an electron would be 90% of the time. It is based on a probability. There are a few principles or rules that go along with making electron configurations and orbital diagrams. The first of them is called the Aufbau principle. Aufbau in German means building up. So they are always added, the electrons are always added to the lowest possible energy level. That means they build up from lowest to highest. That's the Aufbau. Periodic table adds electrons from lowest to highest. Another way to figure out what orbital has the lowest energy is to write out all the S's, and then the P's, and then the D's, and then the F's. And if you draw lines like this, that'd be a way to tell the order that the periodic table fills electrons from the lowest to highest energy. So let's just take a look at that. So the first electrons would go into the 1S. After that is filled, then it would go to 2S, and then 2P, and then 3S, which is following the arrows, and then 3P, and then 4S, Keep following the arrows as we go down, then 3D, then 4P, then 5S, and you get the picture. But if you draw that out, that will help you see how the electrons fill on the periodic table. What is another thing that helps us figure out electron configurations and orbital diagrams? Well, the last one, or the next one, is the Pauli exclusion principle. An orbital is only going to hold two electrons at one time. And within the, that one orbital, if there are two electrons, they're going to have opposite spins. You can think of it as a clockwise and counterclockwise spin around the nucleus. It is more complica complicated than that, but that's good enough for the scope of this class. Two electrons in the same orbital are said to be paired. A single electron is said to be unpaired. A lot of times when we draw orbitals, we draw it as a line, and we draw it with an arrow. That would be an unpaired electron. So the arrow is signifying an electron, and the line is signifying an orbital where electrons can sit. So this would be considered an unpaired electron because it's just by itself. Let's say we have another orbital where there's an up spin or a top spin or a clockwise spin. I've heard it called all of those things. And then there's another one with a counterclockwise spin. So that orbital would be filled, and those two electrons are said to be there cannot be three electrons in here because an orbital can only hold two electrons. So this is showing Pauli exclusion principle by having only two electrons in it and having one with up and one with a down spin. The last rule is called Hund's rule. So we'll follow all these when we're making electron configurations and orbital diagrams. Hund's rule is that Electrons will enter empty orbitals first before becoming paired with another orbital. I always liken this to people getting on a bus. So let's imagine seats on a bus. Two sides. People get on the bus. They sit by themselves. They sit by themselves. They sit by themselves. They sit by themselves. And they just keep sitting by themselves unless they're with their significant other or a friend that they really want to hang out with. Now they're all filled. So let's just say these are all orbitals. In my example, they're buses on the seat. Seats on a bus. All right, now that there's one in each seat, now they can start pairing up. And people will start sitting where next to someone that they maybe don't know. I imagine this being like a city bus where you don't know anybody. People 
very few people will sit next to someone that they don't know when there's other empty seats available. So I remember this because it's Hun, Bus, or is that you in there? But you are going to need to know the difference between what the Pauli exclusion principle is, Aufbau, and Hun's rule. All right, so let's go ahead and practice here. So we're just going to do a few of them on your sheet. The ones that we do not do, I would, you are going to fill in for your homework beyond this video. So let's just go ahead and get started. Atomic number one means it's hydrogen, and there's only one electron. So we're just going to assume these are all atoms at this point. So there would only be one electron. The only orbital that we would fill is the 1s, and we put one up arrow. That first one in is always clockwise or an up arrow. That would be the orbital diagram. The line is representing the orbital. One is the energy level, and S is the type of sublevel. Start getting the verbiage down. The electron configuration is not that different. So the orbital diagram is just showing that electron in the orbital. The electron configuration, you're going to say that's 1s. That is the energy level, the sublevel, and there's one electron in it. So 1s1 is the electron configuration for hydrogen. And every time I click this, it's going to erase what I had. So be sure you are getting these and rewind if you need to. The next one is helium. Again, we only have the 1s. Remember that each orbital can hold two electrons. So at this point, we can still fit our two electrons in the helium in this 1s orbital. So we do not have to move on to the next one. One thing I do want to talk about real quick is the fact that for hydrogen, if this electron jumps to a higher energy level, it would be jumping up to a different orbital, like a 2s or a 2p that we don't have drawn. Right now we're talking about where the brown state electrons are. So we would be in the 1s for helium. Helium, same thing. If it has its electrons jump up, it has to jump up to higher energy levels. But we don't draw them because they're not where the ground state electrons are. Electron configuration, 1s, 2. That means that there's this is the energy level, this is the sublevel, and there's two electrons in that orbital. Moving on. Lithium. Well, now lithium has three valence electrons, so or three electrons total, sorry. So we can't fit more than three in this orbital. So we need to move on to the next uh, next uh, orbital. The next orbital is the 2s orbital. There's going to be two in this one and one in here for a total of three. So we're following Pauli exclusion principle by showing that they're paired, one up, one down, and that they can only hold two. We're showing the Aufbau principle because we're going from the lowest to higher energy level orbital. Hun's rule, we will show in a little bit, but not yet. Electron configuration, 1s2, 2s1. So you're just writing where all the electrons are. All right, next, new beryllium. All we're doing is adding one more electron to this 2s. So that would be what beryllium would look like. And that would be the electron configuration for beryllium. We're just adding one more electron in the 2s. Now things get a little interesting because now this 2s is filled, so we have to move on to the next orbital. And the next orbital, next sublevel, happens to have three orbitals in it. So, I'm going to go back here. Now we need a total of five. So one, two, three, four, five. So we filled the 1s and the 2s first, and then the fifth electron would go into the 2p. You still show these other orbitals as possible places for electrons to go, even though they're not filled. How would you do the orbital diagram? 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Is your carbon? We're just going to add one more. And that's what we have here. Now we are showing Hun's rule, the idea that we are going to fill or fill empty orbitals first. So remember, each line is representing an orbital. We're going to fill these empty orbitals first, and then come back and fill, start filling in the first orbital. So that's what this is showing. Hun's rule. Still, are just showing the orbital and where how many electrons are in it. So I'm going to 
Compound configuration for carbon. We're going to skip number seven and let you do that one, nitrogen. And I'm just going to show you oxygen. So with oxygen, I'll just show you the order that they filled. We have eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we came back to the first orbital for the eight. So it's important to see how the electrons fill into the orbitals. The electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Oops, sorry, 2p4. So there's four total electrons in there. The total possible in this is six, since each orbital can hold two. So we have a total possible in the P of six electrons. A couple more we'll do together. Chlorine just has one more than what the oxygen had, so we're just going to add one more right here. It just went down arrow, now we're going to do another down arrow. And we end a very similar. Two more together, and you'll be doing the rest. Number 11. You will notice that we have something different here. This is called a noble gas notation, or a noble gas abbreviation. What's happened here is once you get, and even with these small ones, you could put helium in brackets, but we typically don't do that. But once you get past number 11, if you can abbreviate, I will ask you to be able to do abbreviations and non-abbreviations, but this neon in brackets tells me, if you look at your periodic table, neon has 10 electrons. So this neon in brackets is telling me that there are 10 electrons in this bracket. So all, everything up to neon, so neon would be like chlorine here, but with one more down arrow. All of that stuff is what's in brackets. That is signified with that. All right? So there's 10 electrons from neon. You can only use the noble gases. And those are the gas or the elements on the very right hand side, right hand column of your periodic table. That's the only ones. So then after that neon, the next orbital or sublevel that fills is the 3s. S's only have one orbital. And I only have a total of 11 electrons. So I have 10 from the neon, and I can only put one more from neon. And now the electron configuration, I can also abbreviate neon in brackets. 3s1. So that would be the abbreviated or oval, uh, noble gas notation for sodium. The last one here is vanadium. Vanadium is number 23. That means that I need to get 23 electrons inside this orbital diagram. I am running out of room when I try to write, so I'm just going to talk it through. The reason why we now have the 3d is because it is the orbit or sublevel that fills after 4s. I need 23 total. The argon is in brackets, and if you look at your periodic table, that's 18 electrons. So that means I need 23 minus 18, five more. So I have to fill in 4s first, so I go up arrow, down arrow. So there's two more, so now I'm up to 20, and then I need 1, 2, 3 in the 3D. Notice how there's five lines because the D sublevels have five orbitals. I fill one at a time to fulfill Hund's rule. Now if I'm going to do the electron configuration, it is just AR in brackets, 4S2, 3D3. That would be the electron configuration. Please work on the rest of this 